One, let's see, we're trying to keep these at what, 25 minutes? 25, 60, let's do layer two.
I built a desk like a month ago. It was over a month. And I, I made a stain out of oil based paint or enamel. Oh shit. And I was doing it barefoot. Like sometimes I like to work barefoot. And uh, I got a bunch of it on my foot. And it's still there. I mean, I wanted to see how long it was going to be there without using paint thinner. Or mineral spirits. So it's like five or six weeks. Oil based products do not mess around. So, look. my favorite coffee cup it says it's a little Tyrannosaurus Rex with those reacher things you know for his little arms and it says I'm unstoppable and I just love that I also learned about salesmen. I was trying to do too much. I was trying to find salesmen for two companies. Plus found one, another GC company in um, Denver. So that's actually salesmen for three companies. And uh, it sucks because I was getting like 200 hits or 100 hits a day per position. I, I just overloaded myself. I couldn't keep up and stay in integrity with, you know, communicating with people and stuff. So uh, I kind of wiped the slate. I'm just going to call that a mistake. But here's a learning experience. I'm limiting interviews to between five and ten a week. You know, a couple interviews uh, per position, and then. I'm going to be more detailed in my job apps to uh, weed out people that don't want to do it. Like I'm going to intentionally weed out the week. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And then <clears throat> I think what I'll do is I'll launch the ad at, let's say, 1 p.m. And then typically what's been happening is by 7, 8 p.m., you know, you have a pretty good chunk of people interested, like 25, 30, sometimes 50, because people get home from work and they look. 
So I think uh, I'll just, at that point, I'll close the job offer and I'll go through those smaller pieces. And I'm just going to do one at a time. Do one, one job at a time. I think I'm going to do... I should do Denver first. Because they'll supply me cash with roofing sales. It'll supply me cash with... Uh, by feeding max claims, and then so that's two sources of revenue from one salesman. I think that's a good idea. So that's my last thing. Michigan we had when I was doing uh, HVAC which is like installing furnaces and uh, air conditioners duct work and all that in new houses uh, me and my partner we were a team for this company that was like the best around you know the absolute best and they treated us all really well like I was making more than my dad for a while and that's how well they treated us um, but we worked for it right like it was not a 40 hour job, it was a 55, 60 hour job. And I did that for six years. But there's this process in a new house where you have to do a rough in. And a rough in is where you install all the ductwork needed, like in the first floor and second floor, and you cut all the holes in the floor, like where your heat runs and returns are gonna go. You run all your bath fans, your chimneys, all that kind of stuff. Anything that needs to be installed before drywall goes on is what a rough-in is. And then you run everything down into the basement. Because in Michigan, we have basements. And that's where all the utilities are. Like, that's where your water here is, your furnace, your sump pump, which is like a pump that pumps water out of the basement. Because Michigan is really low. Um, anyway... I was always on chimneys, so you, to run a chimney, you start on the first floor, you cut a hole where you want it to go into the basement, and then you run this five to six inch round pipe up the first floor, and then up the second floor, and then into the attic, and then out the roof. <laughs> and when you go out the roof, usually there's already shingles on the roof, and you have to like install the flashing so that it won't leak, right? Like, so you have to lift up layers of the roof, put the flashing up under there, nail it, caulk it, 
and you know paint it usually you paint it black and then uh, that's it but going on the roof that was like our it's just like this thing we had like when each of us had to go on the roof it was time for a smoke you know that's when we would take our break and sometimes because it's roof you know like you get a good view of everything and it's just it's nice being up there but sometimes you would have um, it's like a chimney chase I'm sure you've seen them on the outside of the house it's like a rectangle that goes up and there's like a metal pipe that comes out on the top that's usually for a fireplace and so I would run those as well and that's usually like three stories high off the ground and you have to put this big metal pan that we would or cap that we would custom measure and build and put that on over the chimney so that everything on top was waterproof and then solder it so it's you know it doesn't leak and I would climb so you have to climb up there to do that and I would do that I would climb up and then I would take my cigarette break on top of that chimney so I was you know at least 30 feet high usually and I would just sit there and watch you know look at the forest and, and all that um, no, that's what reminds me of this, like, there's moments where I want to take a break and have some tobacco because it just reminds me of that, that period of my life. not really an excuse, but I noticed that was part of it. Because me and my partner, my team member, we were really close. And we did some fucked up shit outside of work, you know? We should both be in jail for a really long time, let's put it that way. Um, I guess I just missed that kind of camaraderie, you know? Quit smoking for two years after you know during that period, so it's not it's not really an excuse at all. I was in an absolute state of rage for two weeks when I quit though. That was really, really uncomfortable.
tried doing these videos a couple years ago, just in general videos. And, um, shit, that's disgusting. I was listening to, or I just go online, how do you make a video? And everyone, their um, suggestion was things like, you know, be overly dramatic, catch your, everyone's attention. Oh, that's so gross. Be entertaining, like, I don't know, I just felt like, um, bullshit you know like I had to put on this mask to be good on videos and I think when I'm do now I'm just like I don't care you fucking you like me or you don't nothing I'm gonna do about it I think a lot of that attitude came from Kali but also I did some social media um, campaigns and Google campaigns I was getting a lot of hits, like I was way above average as far as like how much attention and stuff I was getting in my campaigns, but the results were garbage, like as far as, you know, how many people were turning over, and I just decided that um, most info online is shit, <laughs> so I don't really listen to it anymore. Like, I, what's, what's, what comes up for me in the quiet, like that's what I listen to. My girlfriend in high school, she was, uh, she's blonde hair, blue eye, but she was a quarter Chippewa, which is a, the tribe, one of the tribes we have up there, Native American tribe, and they have this, the way we tried to make amends at the state was to let them build casinos on their land, like we encouraged, encouraged that. And as a result of those casinos, members of the tribe, anyone, I think it's a quarter and under, um, we get a ton of money every year. It's like, I think it started out as 30 or 40,000 a year, but uh, I, I don't know. I want to say it was up to 70 something, plus insurance and free college and all that. I mean, it's not an amends for what we did, but a complete amends, but you know, at least we tried, I guess. Anyway, that reservation was only 40 minutes from my house, and this other girlfriend I had was going to school, they have a college up there, and I don't know, I went, I went to an AA meeting, I was waiting for my girlfriend or something, and I was I went to an 80. Oh, and she was also blonde hair, blue eyes, weird, right? And um, I went to a meeting at a clubhouse, and I was in my my big book phase. AA's got this book they call the Big Book. It's like the program in print. Um, and so when it's my time to share, you know, I did my little big book dance where I quoted stuff from the big book. We agnostics and just. I don't know, I had this little spiel that I would do. And uh, everyone in the meeting got really excited about what I said until it went to this Native American, like pure Native American, 100%. <laughs> the fucker looked me right in the eye. <laughs> He's like, I don't need that book. There's nothing in that book that's going to help me. Everything I need is right here. And, like, it really pissed me off. And then people after the meeting... We're just kind of like, yeah, fuck that guy. He's just kind of grumpy. You know, like, that's how he is. But years later, years, years later, I mean, that, that statement always stuck with me, but years and years later, it sunk in what he was talking about. And he was right. There's nothing in their book that doesn't already come from our heart naturally if we sit in the quiet. 
So I'm really grateful today for what he did because he set me free. He was part of what set me free from the brainwashing of 12-step communities, you know? So I'm really, really grateful for that. And um, yeah, he's a good man.
trying something new. That's high gloss black. I'm gonna try some flat black, see what it blends together with. Thank you. 
I'm trying a new thing where for this commission stuff I'm not good at drawing what I see anymore I don't, I don't know I think it's too much drugs uh, but like with the one in the back there was a person I was thinking about Disney which um, which is Snowy Dragon in Russian. I know I pronounced it wrong, it's fine. But I noticed, I was just thinking about that while I was doing that piece. And then I stood back and I started seeing, I mean, some of this is probably psychosomatic, right? But there's like five, six dragons in there. And then there's like a, like a shaman woman that you could tell she would live in the snow, you know? So, obviously a lot of that probably is psychosomatic, but I'm fine with it if that's what it is. Because it still gets... There's an essence that comes out when you think about something while you paint. And that's pretty cool. I'm gonna go edit these videos. Let's see what we got. Jesus Christ, two hours. Okay. Two hours, no break, not bad, right? Um, we'll let that dry, edit these videos, and brush my teeth because I forgot to do that this morning. That feels really good. Peace out.